That's it. Yeah, it's nearly on the peach. <laughs> Mark's that a temper presentation, Dad? Two. <laughs> it's on the roll, so I mean, that's, that's, that's not too bad. It's a start. This is not Master <laughs> Chef, by the way, people. I'm not quite sure what this one is. <laughs> Look, it goes in the stomach all the same. I feel a bit like a judge, you know, when he's, he's in the court and they just finished the prosecution. And this is what they call the plaintiff, is it? This is the one. And he's just been found guilty. What? You go down. Yes, Tangy. August Jax, he's put he's gonna... <laughs> get off the roof. Oi, get off the roof.
one. Back out in the woods, welcome to TA Outdoors and another episode of the Turf Roof Viking House. I'm uh, here with Dad and today we've been finally finishing the hazel hurdle walls and trying to cut them to shape to match up with the front gable end and the back gable end. Uh, it's more of an aesthetic thing really than an actual practical wall. I guess to make it stronger and make it windproof we would put some, uh, some daub on top of the wattle with the clay but that's going to need a serious amount of clay and we don't have enough clay we don't have any clay in this area we used everything we had on the saxon house uh, so really it's going to be more of an authentic looking storage shelter than it will be an actual livable house but it's been a great learning experience along the way and what we're doing now is just building the raised bed for the inside of the shelter because this is probably just going to be a one person shelter the saxon house is a two person shelter but to be honest if you laid people out on sleeping bags you could probably get 10 plus people in there no problem at all uh, so what we're going to do now is just finish off that raised bed we've had some food it's coming up to late afternoon the rain is coming in and um, yeah we're just going to try and round this off and well we've got some more to do on the inside but really the majority of the big stuff is done thanks for watching let's crack on So this is the one raised bed in the shelter. Like I say, the walls are still open with the hazel. Still got a bit of a gap there to fill, but keeping it really simple for this one. Hopefully I'll be able to do the first overnight soon in it. But essentially this is just a dead simple raised bed like I've done in the bushcraft camp and other shelters. Two big logs underneath, four or five thinner logs on top with some support stakes in the side to stop your bed sliding all over the place. One thing to make sure if you've got different diameter logs along your raised bed, which you inevitably will, try and keep your uh, thicker logs towards the outside. If you have them on the inside, it's going to dig into your back like a ridge. If you have them on the outside, it makes a little sort of saddle, saddle for you to sit in or lie in, and those thicker logs kind of keep you, keep you wrapped in. It's just a little thing I've had experience with sleeping in these um, over, the t over time, over the years, and it's definitely something to be aware of if you're making raised beds. Keep the thicker logs on the outside, thin logs on the inside. This is how I'll be sleeping. Then I've got lots of headroom, and that's uh, yeah, I can move this bed as well. You know, I can get up 
and I can move it to the side, I can move it back, I can twist it round. To be honest, I think what I might do is turn this eventually that way, so my head's either here or in the middle, uh, and that way, when I get up, well, when I'm lying down in general, if I'm lying down that way, I've got a lot more space, so that's probably what I'll do down the line, but for the moment, I wanted to keep, keep all this clear. So that was one of the main things we wanted to get done. Again, I could put another raised bed this side to there, uh, for someone else uh, to, to overnight in here as well. But hopefully the roof and the hazel hurdles are holding up well, the frame, and the moss is on there. We've had a lot of rain, it's fairly dry in here, there's some damp patches I can see around. But I guess that's inevitable with, uh, with moss, where it's going to get saturated and then drip eventually. But I'm pretty pleased with that. It's, um, it's, it's come along really well. So essentially, this is the entrance now. And as you go in, that is the raised bed. That's why I put it there to keep it out of the way. Again, I might change it. Plenty of space in here. So much space for activities. So here's the outside. You can see what we've done with the hazel hurdles where we've had to trim them. The hazel uh, weaving that we've done. We've got to trim it all down just to get a rough shape. And we've made a kind of little porch area there where I'm hoping to build maybe a bench or something so we can look out into the woods. And we did the same to the other side around the back here. Just there. Doesn't look pretty and there's gaps obviously. But it's, uh, it's serving a purpose at least. A little sort of primitive hut. I don't think the Vikings would be too impressed with it. <laughs> but hey, it's come along well. Almost complete. And there's the Saxon house rocking as usual. Do you think we're nearing the end, Dad, of that shelter? Yeah, I'm nearing the end, okay. No <laughs> question of that, yeah. Well, it's pretty good now, isn't it? I, bet, I think you're sick of hazel hurdles. <laughs> it's, it's on a par with digging the hole out of the Saxon house, digging that down. It's soaring with the Katana boys. <laughs> The hazel hurdles, they're yeah. so springy, it's, it's not a satisfactory work ethic. Like you would get saw in a nice 10 inch log, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? It's much easier though to work with the hazel hurdles when you when they're built rectangular or mm. square than having to weave triangular sticks in there. It would have taken so much longer. It's easier to just do that, cut it to shape, and then whatever waste we have, we used on the fire yeah, and, and cooked with it as well. Yeah. But thanks so much for watching, we do appreciate it. I said on my Instagram recently, someone's someone said somewhere a subscriber that my channel is now one of the biggest or the biggest bushcraft youtube channel which i've never really focused on numbers much but that's that's really awesome uh i'm very proud of that and yeah i just think it's a great achievement and thank you for all my support I owe it to yeah. you guys my very loyal fans the ta both ta fishing and ta outdoors fans are very loyal the awesome army we call them they come across me? they come across yeah, yeah the they... awesome army it's um yeah it's, it's it is humbling and um, well, they followed your story, haven't they? they followed well, your... you know, I've come a long way yeah. from a punk kid in the woods building exactly, a fort. Kid, yeah, <laughs> come a long way since then. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been well, what a learning curve. I mean, we went from that to epic Viking houses, yeah, Saxon houses, turf roof houses, uh, pallet cabins, pallet wood cabin, fifteen million. Just, yeah, <laughs> just awesome, what? awesome things. Um, but it's more about the process and the, the learning experience along the way that for us has been, you know, and the interaction with you guys. That's what it's all been about. Not so much the views, but obviously we're very grateful for that. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it's just been it's been a hell of an adventure and it's going to continue. It's going to carry on. Uh, this little village that we've been building here, I'm sure will grow. There's uh, there's other little ideas that we've got uh, for smaller, here, for space. perhaps something a bit smaller as well. We've still got a bit of space and we can turn this into a real little uh, community area. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. I really do appreciate all your views, all your comments. And you've been busy with Eve as well, so yeah. you know we've had a shock of a winter. It's oh. not cold, but just rain. Like I mean, everything. it rains in England a lot. We're known for it. Well, the UK in general, because yeah. it's a maritime climate. But this year, this past year, has been something else. Exactly. I think we've had record flooding. We've had something like 200 flood alerts in the last week around the nation yeah it has been absolutely brutal even my, even my house is nearly flooded and my mm. boat's on a trailer and i think i could launch it straight into the back garden yeah i mean I, I do really feel sorry for the people whose houses have just been destroyed thoughts are with them you know that's a that's hard to yeah. build to build up from i remember when i was a kid your house got yeah done didn't we it? Went, it got we, flooded we, we went to mexico marling fishing 
and um, an overflow ran in the roof and then somebody about a week later we had a big easterly flow a high blocking flow of air and it went up under the ease froze the pipe burst the pipe kept running because it runs inside and it's just a sheet of glass on the outside and somebody said that shouldn't be there you know, my aunt I think it was yeah and my mum my mum at that time was alive and came in and she was in tears they were I the remember mum crying when, she, when we went yeah. in and it was like knee, nearly knee high yeah we around know, the whole house we know what floods are about so yeah. also with the people that have got the floods anywhere in the world really because it's, yeah it's terrible it our is really. house six months up the road even Did with it? all the drying out the dehumidifiers all the painting done it still bubbled the paint it's still in the wood so yeah. god knows what's underneath i know it's scary stuff but i mean you know this is this is british this is the weather this is the climate that we it's have we nowadays now, yeah. Yeah. much more extreme climate you have the, the bushfires in australia obviously the, the flooding over here flooding all around the world and the locusts <laughs> yeah these locust swarms that's a new one isn't the it? the locust swarms I, on the news the other day a guy was saying they could increase 500 fold wow wow imagine <laughs> they're some gonna sport eat, for the birds they're gonna eat your house <laughs> yeah they will it's crazy yeah. but you know you've got to stay safe out there but the main thing is is getting out there and enjoying it and that's what we've been doing that's what we'll continue Absolutely, to do yeah. um if you are interested do check out dad's channel ta fishing, fishing. Um, like i say weekly videos on there if you're interested in helping to support myself and dad we do have a little merchandise website called taofficial.com where we do a range of merchandise which we ship internationally ship out internationally as well um, and it's just a little way of people to show their support and yeah don't forget to follow us on social media platforms instagram facebook there's all links in the description below and so thank you so much for watching hope i don't know what we're going to be doing next but we'll be back out in the woods i'm sure yeah, we might we'll, be down your way we might be it? down in the bunker and uh, having a go at that but either way thanks for sticking along and we'll catch you guys in the next video